Now I want to come on to talk about stationarity and independence in the Wiener process, beginning with stationarity. And if you recall, the mean of a Wiener process has the form t times mu, where mu is the mean of the Wiener process itself, and the variance t times sigma squared. So both the mean and the variance are time dependent, and therefore the Wiener process is non-stationary. And we can test that using the weak stationarity function, which returns the value false. Turning now to increments, what we're looking at here are changes in the level of the Wiener process. Recall that two random variables, x and y, are independent if the expectation of x and y is equal to the expectation of x times the expectation of y. Let's see if that holds in the case of the Wiener process. We'll set up the process proc as a Wiener process, parameters mu and sigma. And then we'll look at the expectation of two increments in the process, from t1 to t2 and from t3 to t4. So we're looking at the expectation of x of time t2 minus x of time t1 and x of time t4 minus x of time t3 given that x is a Wiener process. And we find that expectation is t1 minus t2 times t3 minus t4 times mu squared. Now let's compare that to the product of the two expectations. First of all, the expectation that uh, x of time t2 minus x of time t1 and multiply that by the expectation of x of time t4 minus x of time t3. We do that computation, and it turns out to be the same. t1 minus t2 times t3 minus t4 times mu squared. So the expectation of x and y is the expectation of x times the expectation of, of y. And that means that the increments in a Wiener process the changes from one period to the next are independent of one another. 